got a meeting today to announce my retirement. Um, been battling with my knee all year. And every time I trained, I had some adverse reactions and I got pretty close a couple of times, maybe three or four times, and come made a difficult decision. I spoke to my wife, Olivia, um, over the last 10 days and Ross Spondy and uh, decided that to retire, my knee isn't up to anymore. It's just can't sustain the load that's required to, to play football and it's not for me. So it was the hardest decision I made, but also the easiest because uh, my body made the decision for me. Um, and I reflect when I first came in, I was as quiet as a church mouse when I first came in. Um, and in the boys' test, I got pretty loud and pretty vocal as we were going. So um, I'd like to thank a few people over my journey, some people that have heavily supported me, uh, Ross in particular. I wouldn't have played over 100 games if it wasn't for Ross and um, his philosophy and it really fit in with how I played. Um, Chris Bond, the whole football admin staff, all the physios, doctors, medical. Um, I got pretty banged up a few times, got a few scars and stitches along the way and they always found a way to patch me up and get me out there and I really thank them for that. Um, and to the playing group, um, a lot of the players that I played with have sort of passed, or passed on and done some other things. Uh, but a lot of them are still here as well, so thank you to them. Um, I think about my time here and I'm proud of every moment we had, all the failures and all the successes, all of it in together because we did everything we could, put everything on the line and I'm um, really proud to be part of that. Uh, I thank my family, uh, my mum and dad and my sister. My sister lives in Sydney and she made so many efforts to come over and see me play, so I'm really grateful for that, my mum and dad, right through from juniors. You don't really understand the sacrifices they make until you're a, a parent yourself. Um, to my wife, um, her support that she's given me um, and put up with me because I can get pretty cranky along the way and, uh, <laughs> and I think um, she's fantastic and it's probably why I talk so much at the club because I don't get anything at home because she talks all the time. <laughs> uh, and I'd like to thank some people that have really heavily supported me off-field along the way and uh, David Bailey from Bradley Bay Legal, um, worked really closely with him off-field, done some work experience, so really thank to him for his mentor. Um, and helping me get through some decisions outside of football. And um, I'd like to thank Sean Allen from the Allen Group for the support he's given me. It's been fantastic along the way. Um, I probably missed a few people and, and that sort of thing, um, but everyone knows that I'm grateful for everyone with their help, so I'm probably open to questions now. Lee, is this an um, injury from this year or is it a degenerative thing over time? Yeah, I sustained the injury this year in the, in the pre-season game. I, I played a pre-season game and got injured, missed one and then played the JLT. Um, and I sustained an injury in there and uh, it was quite a severe knee injury and I probably won't go into the technicalities because I'll get it wrong because I'm not a doctor, but it's a fair bit going on. Um, and it's just got to the point where my knee just can't sustain the load. I can sort of do a little bit and the physios and that here have been fantastic. Did everything we could to get me up and I did everything to try and play this year and I would have loved to have played and played on, um, but I'm just not able to uh, with my knee. Congrats on a great career, mate. How, what was it like telling the players? Um, pretty tough. Yeah, we spoke this morning and um, I said to the players, I went to write something down, I started shaking a little bit, so I just went off the cuff and winged it. And uh, I went for a little bit longer than possible. I think a few of them got a bit restless, so I waffled on for a bit, but it was hard. Uh, but like I said before, the easy part about it was is that I did everything I could while I was here and I was part of a group that gave everything. So you, know, you walk out with no regrets when you're part of a team and a culture that just do everything they can to get the result, regardless of what the results are. And I'm proud of that. It's a great story, isn't it? Being rookie listed, missed a couple of drafts, and then them having faith in you and, and playing 120 games and finals and that. I mean, it is a good, you've got everything out of yourself. Haven't you? Yeah, I think I, I mentioned that I, I almost gave it away when I was 20 years old and Mick Barlow got picked up and he sort of put mature age players back as the flavour of the month and it inspired me a little bit to keep going. And, I spoke to Brad Lloyd uh, just before on the phone. He said I was pretty close. I was on their list a few years and that sort of stuff, and they finally picked me. So I said to Lloyd on the phone, you probably cost me a house, mate, but that's all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> what about the, le <laughs> the leadership side as well? So, so you've come from the yeah. rookie list, 100 games, and then also a leader. Is that something you'll remember? Yeah, I, I think at our club, the players picked the leadership group, and I think that's really proud moment for me when my peers picked me to, to be a leader and a role model of the club. And, um, but that's really what I base myself trying to get into footy on, working harder, making the harder choice, doing the things and, and never quitting no matter what, no matter how hard it gets. And we had a group that did that across the board. So, um, And then you had some great leaders in the club when I came in, Matthew Pavlidge, Lou McFarlane, Dave Mundy, Aaron Sandlands. You know, we had lots of other really good leaders that weren't leaders. You know, I think Matt DeBoer, that, you know, Mick Barlow, Tendai Mazungu. So we had a 
really widespread of leaders, and we still do. Um, but to learn from them, and I always say to Pav, he had that un uncanny ability when he speaks. You just absorb by the way he speaks, and and I'd, you'd do anything he asked for. If he asked me to jump off a cliff, I, I would. So um, to see the way he led, and I sort of compare everyone to him, and he's he's the benchmark, and that was fantastic to get to play with him. And he doesn't get recognised the way he should. I think you're part of a pretty successful Fremantle Dockers that nearly got there. Mm. Do you leave satisfied or a little frustrated that you couldn't jump the last mountain? I would have loved to walk around with a premiership medal on my neck, certainly. Um, but like I said, I, we couldn't have done it anymore. We did everything we could. We left it all out there and I don't walk away and I'll speak fondly and proudly of that era and what we achieved and um, I won't shy away from it. I won't be like, oh, I played in the losing grand final. I'll be proud of it and be, we got there and we almost achieved something fantastic. It was just on the day. Things happen. That's football. You're a 50-50 chance. Um, but every single player, no one, no one didn't play their role, no one jumped out the way or anything like that, and that's fantastic. It gives me goosebumps talking about it now, thinking about the group that I was part of. Do you have a favourite moment? The, the Geelong game? Or where, where yeah. You... <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd write that game too, that was pretty handy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, probably that one, we'll go with that one. Uh, you can take some highlights from that. No, uh, probably my favourite moment, <laughs> my favourite moment would be uh, Probably my first goal when I over-celebrated and Ross sprayed me in the rooms for over-celebrating. Kicked it from inside the square, but whatever. Um, and then we kicked the, kicked the goal at Geelong. Kicked the goal from outside 50 again. Um, put us in front for the first time in the game and I walked off like I'd done something wrong because I didn't want to celebrate too hard. So there, like, there's some memories that stick in, stick in my mind. And that performance down at Geelong, no one gave us a chance. Um, they only lost a couple of games or something like that out of 45, I don't know the exact stat, but went down there and there's a small contingent of Frio fans, about 5,000 of them, and they were that loud. You could hear them roaring and they stuck around after the game and watched us walk off. And um, That was a really proud moment for me um, to be part of that. And um, I'll always look back on those final series and that campaign and, and the hard work to get there. Lee, what's your plan, I guess, in the short term, now and then looking a bit further down the track? Yeah, so I've done a lot of study off-field. I've got a double in commerce and law and I graduated that last year and I've been working at a law firm and um, interested in exploring that option. But I was also, over the last two years with a transitioning group, I've done a bit of coaching and done some a level two coaching in the Dave Weed and Next Coach program. So I've done that and I've enjoyed that. So sort of opened all things. I remember Luke McFarlane retiring and his comments were, I haven't been in the game 15 years, but his comments were, you've almost got a degree in football after so long you've been in it. So I'm open to all options, um, corporate or football. Play? I won't be able to with my knee, so that's that's part of the decision. I'd, I'd love to play on if I could, um, and if the club all things been equal, you know, I'd love to play on. But um, the decision's been made for me. I won't be able to do any substantial sports. Really, a life decision about um, quality of life for me and my own family. Where's this club heading, Lee? From your opinion, uh, having been there to the grand final uh, and now the rebuild, how quickly can they go higher up the ladder? Well, anything's possible, and I spoke candidly with Ross and, and Bondi and I felt this year was very similar to 2012 where we, we got going late in the year and we're very close and I feel that the dynamic and the culture and the group is very, very strong. We've got a lot of young players and in 2012 we had a few more senior players and that's probably what pushed us over the edge and got us really going. But the foundations are really strong and I think this group can achieve anything in the next couple of years, certainly. I think um, we've been very close and we've, we've shown our best football is very good and you look year on year, 2017, we, we just won games, won by three or four points, and this year we've had some really dominant games, um, and we're starting to really start to click and gel. It's just that ability to do it consistently um, for four quarters, week in, week out, and that's the challenge for the players and, and a young group, and that's what separates the best four teams from the, the players that aren't, teams that aren't playing finals, is that ability to do it week in, week out. And this group can do that, I believe. Would you be open to an AFL coaching role or AFL club coaching role? What's it paying? <laughs> no, certainly, I'd love to. <laughs> I, I, it's a joke. I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to. I think. I think. I think being being involved in an elite sporting environment is fantastic. I was drafted late, and and um, I've been out in the real world, so to speak, and know how hard it is. Um, and to be involved in this sort of environment where you've got a hundred people working towards the same goal, day in day out, is. Um, you can't take it for granted, it's very special. So I'd love to stay involved in football. Um, and if something came up, I'd certainly consider it and, and have to chat obviously to the boss over there, but we'd figure it out. Stay in Perth? Uh, I really enjoy here in Perth. It's our home now. Um, been here seven years and 
I moved out of home when I was 18 and you know, for a few years in Adelaide, a few years here. Uh, most of our adult life's been here and we've built a really strong family and we've got some strong friendships and, and relationships along the way. So I really like Perth, but sometimes you've got to move and open to that as well. Has the Eagles, Dockers rivalry changed at all in the time you've been at the club? Uh, I don't think so. I think it was very strong. Every state you look at, it, there's a rivalry round that we have in the AFL. You know, we speak about <laughs> Crows, Port, you know, Essendon, Hawthorne. There's a rivalry round and footy's very tribal. So with the two-team town, you're going to have tribal. Uh, sort of competition and it's probably been healthy and been strong and I think it's good for the game. And uh, just quickly, what's the reaction been from the playing group after Gaps was old last night? Oh, I think everyone across the whole AFL and general publics, you know, was shocked by it. Um, but it's been dealt with and put to bed and, and we all move on. Lee, do you think eight weeks was a fair result? I think there's no winners really in this outcome, you know, with injured, suspension, whatever, there's no winners out of this. So. I think it's, it's, it's bigger than that. I think it's, it's hard to say, was it fair, was it right? What's your one bit of advice to Andrew now? He's got a, a long haul back mm. with the broken jaw, fractured jaw. Yeah. What, have you spoken to him this morning? And what, what would be your advice to him to get back to playing footy next year? Yeah, I bumped into him this morning. He, um, first thing he said to me was, he's so sorry he couldn't make it here this morning. That's sort of kid he is. He goes, I couldn't make it. I was a spewing. I wish I could have come and come seen you to say goodbye to the boys. Um, so that's, he's a great kid and he's got a high calibre. So, But he's, he's in good spirits, he'll go home and see his family. Um, I've broken my jaw before, not to the severity that he had, so i sort of got a bit of empathy for what he's going through. Um, so it's good for the skinnies, mate, he was trimmed down a bit, I said drink through the straw. But I said he'll come back bigger and stronger and um, he'll come back fine. He's, he's a really good kid and we've got a great support network here through the club. So. He seems to be a really courageous player. Did it affect you mentally when you got back playing footy? No, you don't think about it. I think you make the ball your object. Um, you don't want to let your teammates down. The rest takes care of itself. There's been a call to get rid of punching in footy off the back of this. What do you think about that? That you know, take that, we'll take punching more seriously. You know, when taggers get worked over or whatever. Yeah, I thought punching was never part of footy, really. To be honest, there's checking and there's other things, but uh, you can't punch someone in the face. Yeah, absolutely not. But I mean, like you know, when they they try to. Oh, you mean the check? Yeah. That's yeah. part of football. That happens 500 times in a game. It would be very hard to police that. Lee, you spoke about the importance of seeing your players in that 2012 sort of year. It's going to be a few of you guys moving on at the end of this year. How important is it to keep a couple of senior guys around just for this young group, do you think? I, I think our club and our young group's in a really good place. I think we've got some really strong young leaders coming through. Um, and then we've got some experience, and I've got no doubt some senior players will, will play on. Um, and that's good for the club as well. They provide great experience and you know you don't know what you don't know <laughs> so they share that knowledge with the boys really well so it's really good for the club. Like Who's Sandy and Ballas go on next year? Yeah well, you have to ask that. <laughs> Who's the best player you Not played with here Freo Elite? Sorry? Who's the best player you played with? Oh I played with some special players it's hard to say the best. Um, I think for what he does and his height Aaron Sandland's phenomenal I think you can't go past that someone that big and and play that long and the way he moves and carries around his skills at training, he's probably the best kicker at training at the club. Should do a kick a bit more in the game, mate. Um, and Pavlidge, very, very good. I think, um, like I said about before, he's phenomenal. All Australian, all three spots and his character and leadership. Um, and then I've made some really special relationships with some players along the way, Mick Barlow, Zach Dawson, you know, players that you just, they never give up on you. And that, they're the players that I cherish, you know, Hayden Ballantyne. You know, Dave Mundy's a star. I could go through every single player on the list, you know. So I have a lot of close friendships, a lot of fond memories. Thank you. Good on you, mate. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.